Hello friends, this is Ryan from Behind Eyes Gaming back on Behind Eyes Gaming Ranger over in the solo cell phone standard league. I'm mostly playing incursion these days and a little bit of solo cell phone incursion and solo cell phone hardcore incursion. I have uh, kind of my hands in everywhere in that league. It's been one of the most fun leagues in a long time, but we're going to get back with our game guide. And I would highly recommend that you start off on that league if you're going to start playing now. A lot of interesting mechanics, you can learn a lot from that. Uh, we are going to start off at the Undying Blockage here in the sewers, since we last got the Infernal Telk. Um, and so we break through that blockage, and we're able to go to the Ebony Barracks. Now, the Ebony Barracks is a very straightforward zone. The waypoint is right above the exit to the sewers, and we simply go up the stairs and we are going to kind of continue pushing on here. Now, I forgot that I put my game sounds back on, so I'm going to quickly lower them after I clear the area of these enemies. There we go. Uh, and my damage is really starting to fall off too, so we're going to be looking for a better bow. And while I'm doing that, I should probably uh, switch my loot filter. So. Uh, let's start off by <laughs> lowering the sound again, so it's not quite so loud, and I, oop, I don't know what I did there. Okay, map and landscape transparency, there you go. Uh, I am going to switch to a uh, less strict loot filter so we can actually get some loot. I have my late game loot filter on at the moment. Alright, and loot filters, uh, there are a lot of videos on loot filters out there, I would recommend checking one out. Uh, I may do one later on, but I'm not exactly an expert on that. I just kind of uh, Google the latest one and then download it. So we're going to go through here, and here is our boss, or our zone boss. Uh, actually very important. This is General Gravisius, and the reason he's so important is, well, uh, he is a quest to get your level 28 skill. And I'm not sure if we're going to use one of the level 28 skills or not. Uh, but we are going to go ahead and take care of him. Oh, okay, looks like we got double rarity on those boots. And you can actually tell something interesting about these boots I want to explain. Uh, normally a rare has to be four properties. This, while it only shows three stats, is actually four properties. Um, it has two rarity rolls, a suffix and a prefix. And if you go into your options and under the... Uh, under user interface if you check where is it show full descriptions it will actually show um, the roles of your items what tier they are and whether or not they're a suffix or a prefix which is kind of handy to have so it looks like this is a three stat rare which isn't supposed to happen but it is in fact a suffix and prefix of rarity so just something I thought I'd explain, because it's not something you run into too often, but I could see how it would cause confusion if you do run into something like that. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and continue to burn our way through here. Do some nice damage there. Uh, I would really, after playing on a different character with a uh, Vol Rain of Arrows for leveling, I would really like to grab one of those at some point. If I can find one, uh, we're definitely going to be hitting any Vol side areas that we get in hopes of doing that. Uh, we're going to go down here to Fury Bolts to get the nice little juicy projectile damage. And interestingly enough, that particular node also gives you strength, um, which is interesting. It's one of the few kind of easy to get strength nodes that also will affect your projectile damage. We have a Verici mission here. I like to get the Verici missions even if I'm rush rushing through uh, because they're always going to generate an extra exile and exiles are great sources of loot. Uh, basically they're they're kind of designed to be similar to just a player character. They're going to have builds that a player character would use. They're a little bit more difficult. Um, some of them are quite dangerous actually and they always drop a full set of loot meaning uh, at least one item of every slot. Uh, including two rings so really 
nice to be able to do the Verici mission, even if you're just trying to run through and get all the content, because you'll probably run into one of the one of the exiles and be able to get some good loot. Uh, this is the zone boss, Cole. He's quite dangerous. Many people just run past him. Uh, since we have Mirage Arrow, we can kind of just dodge him. He has a very, very high amount of physical damage. He has a chain that pulls you forward. He's basically the uh, mid-boss from Act 1, Brutus, except uh, with slight differences. Very, very slight differences. So, uh, two stone rings start dropping. Uh, I, I kind of like my attack speed ring for now. Uh, we could use one of our essences on a ring and potentially get something nice, but um, there's nothing we really want to get there, so we're not going to bother rolling it. We could also try using an alchemy orb on it, but once again, just not really worth the currency at the moment, and we're not in a terrible place for jewelry just yet. We don't have great jewelry, but um, you want to kind of put off force upgrading your items until you really have to in a lot of cases. You're going to get plenty of alchemy orbs, but they do have a certain degree of value. So uh, our goal here is to assassinate the target within the time limit. For the Verici mission, we did so. Uh, Verici will teleport to us after the fact, and we'll get experience for him. And if I hold this, you can see that he pull he dropped gloves, a sword, armor, a helmet, amulet, two amulets, <laughs> uh, a bone bow, which uh, I may craft. Let's see, that's level 31. We're currently using a bone bow. So, oh, that's uh, level 23. So we already have one of those. Um, but yeah, basically at least one of every every piece there. So pretty cool. Uh, really important to kill them. Great sources of loot. Uh, we didn't really get anything we could use per se, but fairly often you're going to. Um, oops, looks like we're probably going to go up this way. And I missed this door right here. So we're going to go up through this. And once we, we should be coming up on the waypoint here, yep. And the waypoint will be always next to the next level, which is Lunaris level 2. Um, Lunaris le level 2 is a little bit maze-like, but it's actually quite easy to navigate. If you kind of take to the outside, um, you'll always go up the stairs in Lunaris level 2. So um, your goal is to find stairs you can go up. Um, so I kind of stick to the outside, kind of like you would in a maze. And we wait until we find the stairs going up, uh, kind of ignore the dead ends. Uh, don't like go around the middle too much, because it's not going to ever lead to the way out, or the way forward rather. And right here is our first upstairs. And you go, I think, three sets of stairs total uh, before you get to the kind of final level. And there is also a trick on that one. So we're going to continue to kind of stick to the outside here, uh, take these down. There are, uh, some of the enemies here are at least a little bit dangerous. Look like we got to a dead end. Um, the, <laughs> I don't want to say the community's nickname for them, but uh, the lovely ladies with the uh, kind of tentacle arms, uh, they will fire projectiles at you very rapidly and in large groups they are quite dangerous so those uh the what are they called i killed them too fast but we'll take a look at this bow possibly an upgrade 51 percent physical damage oh there they are uh tentacle miscreations so uh quite a dangerous enemy they do a decent amount of physical damage very rapidly. Um, we're taking them down before they can really do too much, and because we have a lot of cold damage, we're chilling them, which slows their attack speed and move speed. I see stairs going down, which means we took a wrong turn. Um, we could go back down and circle around that way and have new enemies to fight, but I'm just going to kind of cut through. Yep, uh, you don't want to cut through that way, but... That means basically that it was up this way. And I can actually see uh, the stairs, so I should have been able to see that on the minimap. A little bit of an unfortunate event there, but 20 to 59 compared to 18 to 54, 1.35. Okay, so the bow we currently have is better. 
Uh, we do have a level up. We're going to get Fury Bolts to give us that increased global accuracy and projectile damage, as well as strength, putting us at a nice, respectable 140 strength. Um, we don't really need much more than that. Uh, means we could probably drop our amulet if we'd like to. So we went up those stairs. That was the second set of stairs. Take down these blue enemies really quick. Grab the portal scroll. All right. And this is the zone boss spine crack. Does a fairly substantial amount of damage, but is also fairly squishy as you can see. So if you have a uh, decent damage, you can take him down without much of a problem. And when you come up the third and final set of stairs, you'll notice that one way there is two wagons and the other way there is one wagon. Uh, you go the way that there's only one wagon, uh, the other one will lead to a dead end. So nice little trick there so you don't you know, waste time going to the dead end. Uh, we're gonna open the box without identifying it again, which will sometimes lead to a death. So not something I would recommend for sure, but we are being being brave uh, we're kind of on the lookout for a decimation bow which is the next tier of bow uh, it has a innate built-in crit chance so it's quite powerful uh, we have gotten some crit nodes and we do have the increased critical strike uh, skill gem as well that we can have a couple of four socket on the ground there um, let's see, so, Rain of Arrows, Mirage Archer, okay, so we don't currently have it attached, um, we have four green slots, but it is something we want to look out for. Uh, there's always a blue pack here, so really interesting to note, uh, there's actually, this, this used to be an area you would farm if you were under leveled, but nowadays being under leveled is fairly uncommon. Um, because there are a fair amount of guaranteed blue packs in this area. Another one will be at the top of the stairs, which is right before the boss, so there will always be a blue pack here. Uh, sometimes they are these blood elementals, and they'll be underground. Alright, so we'll get our other skill point. We're going to start heading over to um, grab Lethality and uh, probably Deadly Draw are going to be some of our next ones, along with this Herbalism node here. So get some life. Um, we can also probably grab bravery, and maybe that's a little bit of a better option in this particular case. Uh, getting life, but we're going to get life going this way anyway, and then we're going to be closer to damage. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop down that, uh, and then we're going to start barraging. And she actually changes forms um, if she gets in one of these circles. Uh, the cold form is actually quite dangerous. You can hide behind pillars, and it is something I would recommend doing, especially if she turns into the cold form. If she turns into the... Oh, we got two death bows from that. Nice. So they could possibly be uh, nice little upgrades for us. Okay, let's pick up both of these. And then the tower key, which is going to be a necessary quest item. We'll go back. And I'm going to remove some of these armor scraps, like half of them or so. We're running low on wisdom scrolls because I do have those filtered out. Uh, let's see if we can find anything decent on these. Um, this one's quite good. 46 to 110 physical damage. Uh, it does require level 32, but we are currently level 30. We're going to hold on to that. That is quite a bit stronger than what we currently have, plus has 7% crit chance. Um, we lose a little bit of attack speed, but that's going to be good enough for us. Alright, so we're going to sell those, hold on to this other bow, and uh, once we defeat Piety, we can talk to Grigor over here, who's had a bit of an unfortunate time. He's been transformed into a, a little bit of a monstrosity thanks to Piety, and she will or he will give you a book of skill, which will give you a skill point. So pretty handy there. Uh, we'll get closer to the herbalism. Herbalism's nice because it gives you increased recovery rate, uh, increased recovery for life blasts. Now, once we have our tower key, we'll go back to the 
Ebony Barracks, and we still have the map unlocked. We're always going to kind of veer to the right here, and to the right you'll see all of these fallen ribbons on our way. That means we're going the right way. They're usually by the tents, and there will be another exit. This will be to the Imperial Gardens. Now, the Imperial Gardens is the through zone to uh, kind of the last area of Act 3. So we're going to head through here. And we're going to go ahead and look for the waypoint, which should be relatively close. Uh, the, there are these uh, spiky... There's a couple of dangerous things. So uh, these right here, the porcupine goliaths, will explode into spikes when they die, and they do a fairly substantial amount of damage. Um, this is the library, which is actually important to make note of. Uh, you want to get the waypoint before you go into there, because you want to be able to go back if you do decide to go through there. But there is a quest in the library that allows you to get any of the skill gems for any classes up until this point. Um, which is really quite useful. There, it also gives additional skill gems that, uh, some support gems that you can't get up until this point, uh, such as the elemental penetration gems and a couple of other kind of niche ones. But we're not going to do that for now. Um, we're just going to continue along the main quest line and we'll uh, possibly come back for that later. Um, if you have a specific skill setup that requires gems that you can't get, uh, based on the quest that you or based on the class that you chose, the library quest is a great way to get that. All right, so we're gonna go up to the Scepter of God, which is a nice little tower here. It's a um, six or seven stories, maybe eight, six somewhere in between six and eight stories. Um, I'm not going to do the Tora quest right now, although Tora is one that you would want to do if you're playing a bow character under most circumstances. I'm leaving, I'm leaving the rings for now. Alright, and uh, the there are these uh, kind of, oh I don't know how to describe them, but um, they basically shoot quills at you at rapid speed. And then there are these frost leakers, which can actually be pretty dangerous. Uh, they leave a little trail of frost behind them, which slows you. To, they do do a fairly substantial amount of cold damage, as I totally purposely demonstrated. Oh, I will do the Tori quest. These, the dens or lairs, are actually very quick and very easy to do if you stumble upon them. And they usually have uh, blue and uh, yellow monsters in them, which I'll have increased experience so that i like to do these ones in particular for torah even if i'm zooming through that i have a certain number of quests that i like to do for the masters otherwise i kind of ignore them to end game or until end game uh, because you do get an increased amount of experience for doing them later on for doing the quests uh, so you know it's not quite as effective and you know, your time's a little bit more productively spent leveling at a certain point. Although it is nice to get them to level 3 early on, so that you can create a hideout. That is one thing to note. So, you may, depending on uh, how early on in a league, or um, if you're just starting, it may be worth leveling them before that. But, that is up to you. Uh, this is the zone boss for this zone. It's actually extremely dangerous. Um, he has a bunch of traps including uh, bear traps which lock you into place and lightning traps which do a very substantial amount of damage so uh, very very powerful and you should be very careful when going through this zone uh, he, he can lock you into place with bear trap and then shock you and burn you down very quickly quickly uh, with the lightning traps especially if you get crit so um, but yeah we're able to Take care of them pretty safely. Uh, shouldn't have walked right through to those blue frost walkers, but we do survive. Luckily, we were able to craft enough life on our gear uh, so that we're squishy. So once you see the waypoint, or once you get to the uh, third floor here, there will be a waypoint, and then there will be a secondary exit, which will take you up to the upper scepter of God, which is a different instance entirely. These first three floors are a single instance, so anything uh, as far as masters can be on any of these floors. Um, if you are if you have one of the league mechanics where it can only appear once per instance, um, 
it will appear once per floor as well so that's something to note uh, so we grab the waypoint we're gonna get our first little knife life node here and then we'll be able to pick up herbology next next level which will be very nice give us that increased health regeneration and here is the upper scepter of god it'll take us it'll have loading screen take us to the uh, other instance here here they are chimerals so plumed chimerals a little bit dangerous uh, the little bubbles that you're seeing on the these other guys are proximity shields which means they can't take damage um, from any kind of projectiles or anything that are that start outside of them uh, the way that you, you can deal with them as a bow user or as a, a spell user that uses kind of projectile based spells is by just walking up right next to them it's a little bit dangerous but uh, generally speaking unless you've made yourself incredibly squishy uh, and if that's the case, uh, you should probably work on your defense. But generally speaking, it's not too much of an issue to just walk up within there, within the bubble itself, and uh, take care of them there. Gonna take care of this ghost. Um, okay, so we're level 31. Uh, I believe the zone boss should be okay. It's not gonna be here. Uh, the zone boss for the upper floor is on one of these balconies. I'll see if I can find them my way through if not uh okay i think it's here because there will be all these chimeros so yep here it is there is a uh paradise venom uh who actually starts at low health but devours corpses so uh will actually gain health you can do a couple of things you can just burn him down before he gains the health um, kill him first or you can wait for him to fully heal and then eat all of the corpses and then take him down from full health there um, generally speaking once again if you have a decent amount of damage it doesn't really matter you probably won't even notice that he has an ability half the time um, a lot of skills will scale in such a way that you take him down without much of a problem all right but see oh the proximity bubble went away but i was gonna walk up right next to them and uh stand in that bubble so uh we're gonna go through and actually when you're first passing through this area uh somewhere right here uh in the upper scepter of god there's a little cage if you open it you will unlock the seventh playable character which is the scion and the scion starts in the center of the tree and is kind of a, a jack of all trades and has the advantage of being able to do some interesting hybrid builds because of her position on the tree. So pretty pretty fun character to play. Um, also has some very interesting ascendancies and we'll go over those soon. So you'll have to fight a bunch of mini bosses, three at a time, um, first in this fight. You are fighting Dominus overall. Um, so the first three are doing different kinds of elemental damage uh the next ones will do uh, bleed and chaos damage mostly and then you'll fight dominus himself um dominus will come down uh he has two attacks basically he has this attack where he shoots ghosts at you it does a lot of damage uh you can hide behind pillars or kind of just strafe around them uh, this center piece will also stop you from getting hit from it. Uh, he also lays these little shock totems that you don't want to stand in. They do damage over time, um, and you kind of take extra damage. And his last attack is... I'll try getting him to do it. Uh, he brings his hand back like that, and he uh, says, The Touch of God, and does a nice little slam attack. Uh, hurts quite a bit, so I would not recommend standing in it. Um, and... Yeah, you can just kind of run circles around him when he's doing this attack. Um, if you do tight circles like, oh, bad example. <laughs> All right, it's safer to hide behind things. Maybe my movement speed isn't high enough for that, but once you take down this first stage, uh, he is a two-stage boss. He will uh, drop into the bottom part here. He'll get sucked into the ground and he'll come up as this big spooky looking abomination um you want to stay within this ring right here because uh he will make it rain blood which will make you take bleeding damage uh, slowly over time as he hits you you'll take the bleeding damage 
And the blood rain. Uh, let's see if he actually does it. I'm not going to move. Hello? Are you going to do the... There it is. Uh, so when he has this bubble, it cleanses you of the blood. But if you stand outside the bubble, it will do a very substantial amount of damage. So I would recommend staying within the bubble if you can help it. All right, we're gonna grab this uh, Colossal Life Flask and we are on to act four. You can talk to Lady Diala, but you don't have to. You can just go to the aqueduct. She just kind of does story stuff. Um, she used to, I don't know if she does because I haven't talked to her in so long, but she used to trigger the game credits when you talk to her because Dominus used to be the end game boss. And before that, Piety was the endgame boss. And before that, the uh, Act 2 Vol Construct was the endgame boss. So the game has changed a lot over the years. Uh, now there's 10 acts. They went from 2 to 3 um, to 10 act bosses since I've started playing. It's pretty great, honestly. So I'll take down this boss. Um, we are now in the Aqueduct. The Aqueduct is a nice little... Uh, Nice little straightforward zone for the most part. It has two sides and there are little bits that jut off on either side, um, kind of like docks. And if you go down those docks, you will end up, uh, there's a guaranteed blue pack at the end of each of them. This is a decent leveling area, although uh, later on you'll find a very similar area that's even better. Um, but there is decent monster density here uh, lots of guaranteed blues so if you do find yourself underneath the zone level or just struggling in general uh, and would like to level up a little bit this is a nice place to do it Oop, i should have rolled that first arcanist strong boxes are very strong st strong boxes that uh, give you currency and they're always worth to roll um, we did have currency that we could have rolled that with and we didn't do it so mistake there um just if you run into an arcanist strong box and it's white like that you want to try to roll uh, plus additional items or plus qua or percentage quantity increased items so uh it's pretty you're almost always going to get good bang for your buck on rolling those because they're going to drop currency and it can drop even the rarest of currency items such as exalted orbs or even a mirror of calandra so which is an incredibly rare and incredibly expensive. If you get one of them, you keep it. Uh, you kind of wait until you're experienced enough to understand the value of things. Because uh, most people, well, I've played this game an enormous amount of time over many, many years, and I've never found one. Uh, most people will go their entire path of exile careers, even if they play tens of thousands of hours without ever finding a mirror of Kalandra. So. But yeah, uh, you're more likely to find something else useful like alchemy orbs, uh, chaos orbs, regal orbs, uh, that can, divine orbs possibly. There are a lot of useful things that can drop out of there that are very valuable, uh, both in terms of just being able to use them and to be able to use them for uh, trade currency. So always roll alchemist box. Don't just click them blindly like I did. Learn from my mistakes. All right, so see, we have the... A nice little area that juts off again. If you choose to go down the other side, uh, th it'll be pretty much the same thing. There'll be uh, slightly lo different looking docks that'll uh, veer off to the left instead, of course. Get this transmute. Alright. We're uh, approaching on half an hour, which is good timing because we are going to reach the town for Act 4. We are at Highgate, so... That's going to be all. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you next time. This has been Ryan from my Behind Eyes Gaming. Bye! Thank you to all my patrons for your generous support. Without you, I would not be able to continue making content. If you would like to be featured in the credits or find out how to help support me on Patreon, check out the link in the description below. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye!